Alright, this is just a general Zippo babble video, catch guys up on uh, what's going on in the shop and I've had some questions uh, that I'd like to answer. Um, one was on this convertible hitch that works on the front or the back of your Simplicity or Alice Chalmers garden tractors. Dan Poppelman. Peppy Dan on Simple Tractors. Peppy Dan. Go to Simple Tractors. Go to Users. Find Peppy Dan. Contact him. He manufactures these. And you can purchase one from him. That takes care of that one question that I get asked a lot. And another question I get asked a lot is, am I going to build that twin engine Simplicity Landlord? Yes, I am. I've got one full complete inner and outer dash side covers here outside I have a complete rolling chassis with a broken frame I'll go ahead and walk out there I'll take you guys with me it's yard art right now oh what a beautiful day come on spring there's the old walk behind yes it still runs but here's the, uh, you've seen it in another video or two, uh, but here's the 64 landlord that's going to donate uh, a lot of its parts to the cause of uh, making the twin. So, but if you look right here, that's what happens when you dump your clutch. So what happens when a 13 year old boy is playing and showing off to his friends which is what happened here <laughs> I'm not gonna harp on that I've harped on it enough but um, the front of this frame is going to get cut notched sectioned and widened to accommodate an engine forward of the stock position of an engine and it's going to get welded and affixed to the front of the a, a good frame that I have and we'll take a walk around all these really big rounds of wood that I've got for uh, firewood this year I think I'm gonna do all right funny thing is I've got so far 28 trees on the schedule to take down fortunately the majority of them are just cut from the ground and drop okay where are we going Let's come over here and Climb up on the trailer. There is the good frame. That's going to have the engine closest to the driver mounted. And then you guys will see a B110 frame sitting here too. That B110 frame, there is the inner dash. And we'll take another walk back inside because it was another question. Hello, a log splitter. Hello old seat from old blue. Hello hydro tranny. And that's another part of what I'm building. You'll see in here there is a B110 or 112 hood hanging dash. And behind the ladder is the grill frame. All the other little incidentals I've got. And I will be putting together an HB probably an HB either 115 or 116 depending on which engine I decide to put in Got a bunch of them sitting over there and what else is happening people were asking if I'm leaving the 23d9 horse in engine 44 the answer to that question is no I am not and time is kind of flying by I've got to get uh, I'm going to get cracking on getting that engine swapped in, getting everything dialed. But what is Zippo putting in there? Well, I got the boys that uh, like to drag race at the go-to. And the go-to is uh, close again here in Indiana. A couple years ago, uh, we went up to LaPorte and went to it and had a drag race. And the old Squire with the 23D9 horse beat two other was it just one or two? I don't remember now. I think it was two other tractors uh, that were modified for pulling. So, what's going in? Well, that engine right there is going in there. What is that? 
Yeah, we can take a sneak peek. Nah, we're not going to take a sneak peek. Those of you who saw it close enough know exactly what it is and what it will be capable of doing. Another question is, is what engine do I have in my Garden Mark Squire? Because um, they see uh, videos on uh, older videos where there is gold showing through. Well, yes, it's a gold replacement engine. It's a later model engine, and I just have the oil bath filter on just because that's what's correct for the period. But it has a gold series replacement 8 horsepower in it. And old Smokey smokes like a freight train on startup. And I have to add oil just about every tank full. I'm having to add three, four, five ounces of oil. Well, why don't I just fix it? Well, about eight years ago, <clears throat> when I put the engine in, oh, it might not have been eight years, six years ago when I put the engine in, I knew that it smoked. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to run it till it blows. And... I'll rebuild it then because I've got all the parts for it and I just wanted to see how long the engine would last as long as I stayed on top of the oil and kept uh, I'm gonna hear a thud probably here nope um, I wanted to see how long the engine would last without me re-ringing it and either honing or boring the cylinder out and putting an oversized piston in well obviously years have gone by this is my go-to grunt tractor that does just about everything except mows and I work it to death I mean I work it hard and that engine just keeps on chugging along so eventually it's gonna blow um, but that's what the engine is it is an eight horse replacement engine from Briggs and Stratton what else what else what else lots of questions about that seat and whether or not it is original that is an original new old stock seat that I picked up unbeknownst to me when I was given a box with a bent seat pan just like this one um, Somebody had opened the seat pan up in the dealership and opened it up too far and it kinked and creased it. Those of you guys who have uh, these styles know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, oh, not to jump subjects, but I did forget to show you guys. You might wonder, well, yeah, you've got everything for the HB1, 15 or 16 or whatever it is, but where's the seat pan? Yeah, the seat pan's right there. That's right now, it's my waiting area seat. Ha! <laughs> okay, now let's get back over here. Um, I got that fender pan in a box and I thought all right well you know maybe I can straighten that out and use it on something and I was able to and I did um, but also in that box was this new old stock seat that had never been mounted to anything and I got this at the same time with the same haul as the old Squire I don't know how many of you guys remember way back then but that was an epic haul that was a very very good haul came home with a sickle bar mower my carry-all box that I recently had questions about and I'll go over that here in just a minute um, carry-all box leaf vac that had never been used still had the uh, dealership tag on it oh, there was just a horde of stuff and a bunch of spare parts and but anyway yes that is a new old stock all original seat and it is not perfect but neither is the old landlord the old landlord's not been restored so and yes I was playing around on the lathe and I made an acrylic shifter so just to be different always doing something different I got the brass one on there this one's got a shift pattern on it the Squire, which it won't focus on, well, has one with the shift pattern on it. And I do those shift patterns myself, you know, and then, of course, Trader has a, a piston on it. Thank God for Zoom, saving me from having to walk all over the shop. 
Um, and then other questions. Are my front headlights on the old Landlord original? Well, they're original Harley driving lights. But they are, I don't know if we can get, yeah, you can see it. They are guide lights, which are identical to the lights on our on our tractors. Boy, aren't those pretty. Those are new old stock lights. Anyway, and those are original 1964s with the light switches on them in really nice shape. But anyway, and then uh, I was asked about those. The light bar, I actually got off my buddy Biggie Rat uh, off eBay, and unbeknownst to me, <laughs> he had it, and I give 22 bucks for it. But it's such a hard, heavy chrome plating, it's either, it was either done a long, long, long time ago, or it is an original uh, that was on a special edition tractor or something to that effect. So, then the next question that I was asked was still about the lights, and that was, where did the chrome uh, bezels come from? Those are also Harley driving light takeoffs. A lot of people who own Harleys will take their stock ones off, get Frenched or customized Kriakin or you know some other JP Cycles. They'll order something different and they'll throw these on eBay. And you can pick these up on eBay for under 20 bucks for a set. So you can dress up your black lights, take the black rings off put the chrome rings on they're a direct OEM type fit so that's that about the lights and then the eyebrows sorry the eyebrows same thing they're Harley Davidson eyebrows that's where the eyebrows came from and then many Lord's lights are not um, guide lights they're actually KC off-road lights that I picked up at a uh, flea market but they're the same size and I just thought they were awesome and the price was definitely right so I picked them up all right what else was I asked I was asked all kinds of stuff and and, and it wasn't in relation to fixing this or fixing that oh yeah the Gario let's get this out of the way here dun, 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 dun. now Move the gas cans. Yeah, I know, don't grab the spouts. Clinkity, 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 clink. You can see the new steel. You can see I've got a couple of holes drilled. I've got, a, got it marked. Uh, I believe there's 17 holes altogether that I have to drill on this. Uh, but this is full 1 8 inch thick steel. Really, really thick, really heavy. This one piece of steel weighs just about as much as the carryall box. And then the frame, the entire frame, and I tilt this forward, the ent entire frame is uh, remanufactured as well. All brand new stuff. And then if we look down here, we'll see why I'm replacing the bottom. And if you look at this piece of steel, you'll see it comes all the way up underneath the lip here. And I did that on purpose, just going to make everything a lot more secure and a lot more rigid. Yes, I have the tailgate, and <clears throat> where I put it is beyond me. At the mo oh, it's underneath everything there. Tailgate's down there. So this one had quite a bit of rust on it, but the price was right, so I went ahead and picked it up. So yes, even though I sold my original carryall that I had, uh, on the old landlord on the short video clip and a lot of the pictures that I post on Facebook um, and my buddy Brian Osinge has it as a matter of fact uh, the um, and he didn't get it from me it was sold two or three times and he wound up with it which I thought was kind of cool it's the second thing he's gotten he also I had a uh, 990 210 early sickle bar um, that I picked up and then I sold it to Biggie Rat and then Brian Ozenge bought it from Biggie Rat so he's got two things that I've owned but he didn't get them directly from me <laughs> so but anyway I did give him I thought yeah I did give him a cultivator but anyhow 
Uh, that pretty well rounds it out. I know I was getting ready to say something. Oh, um, yeah, so a lot of the pig you guys saw with the dual sets of ags on, and those ags are sitting right there waiting patiently to go back on something. Um, that is what everybody sees in the old landlord when I post the pictures with the greater blade on, which is back behind the wood stove. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I know I keep jumping around, but I got me a couple of neat old uh, ice cream shop tall bar stools, cafe style. Again, thanks to actually Mrs. Biggie Rat gave those to me uh, when I went out there here a while back. But nice addition to the shop. It's kind of neat. But at any rate, there you go. It's out of the house, the 3212V. Now, believe it or not, the one and only tractor I have ever personally restored because this one was all painted up and I received the rolling chassis and that was done by Brian Ozengay. So this is actually the only one I have ever fully restored every nut and bolt front to back, top to bottom. Um, and after years and years and years of uh, actual use, still looks pretty good. Anyway, that's it. I have babbled on for a really long time. It's going to be a long video that will only interest those that are that enjoy to hear. And excuse me, enjoy hearing me babble. And no, that is not my snow cab. No, that is no longer my Amerind, Amerind, McKissick, Mighty Mac, Leaf Shredder, uh, Brian. That's going to Brian. Brian Ozengay. So, anyway, there you go, guys. You got it. Oh, and I talked about the counterclockwise uh, starter generator. And there is one right there, and that's what I use that for. Rotating my engines backwards to get an accurate compression test result. So, that's it. This is Zippo. You guys have got the update. Thank you for all the prayers for my family member. Um, we're keeping him as comfortable as we can. He's a uh, very, very lucky man. Uh, the entire village has come together and has banded together. People have come from thousands of miles away to see him. So thank everyone for all your prayers. This is Zippo. Later, I'm out of here.